Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today's video we're going to deal with uh, sharpening. In our last one we, we touched on noise reduction. Uh, let's go down to the detail panel where the, both of those tools are located. Um, in the last video we tackled noise reduction first because um, often if uh, you have a lot of noise in it in an image. Sharpening it first really can make that noise stand out and, and be pretty ugly. If I know I've got an image with a lot of noise in it, I'll usually tackle that first, and then later I'll decide on the amount of sharpening I want. Um, today we're going to uh, approach sharpening with a couple of different images. We're going to use this landscape image uh, as well as apply it to a portrait image. Um, as you can imagine, uh, you would approach sharpening those very differently. This image has a lot of fine detail and texture, whereas a portrait might be much softer, and you wouldn't want to use the same exact amounts of sharpening um, for both, as you could get some really uh, strange results. Uh, this image here, I'd like to just go um, back up to the basic panel, do a quick, uh, a quick edit on this, and then we'll work our way down to uh, sharpening. So the first thing I'd like to do is warm this up a little bit. Um, I'd like to make it feel a bit more how it really looked when I was there that day. Um, I'm gonna bump up the exposure just a tad. We'll open up the shadows. This is a little darker than I would like it. I'll we'll open those up some. Bring down the highlights. And let's see about our black level. I think that can stay where it's at. Um, we can add a touch of clarity to it. Uh, not, not a whole lot. And let's go down here to detail now. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a preview here of um, part of the image that's been magnified. We can click in here and drag it around. I think that's kind of a uh, slower way to get where you want to go. Uh, you can also click on this icon and when that's selected anywhere you move the cursor will give you a preview area. Let's uh, choose something right about here. Uh, so I just click there and now it's going to remain locked in place. Um, what I like to do is have a preview image here uh, as well as be zoomed in somewhere else in uh, the main image area. So let's go zoom in to one to one. We can look at how it changes this uh, um, these mountains here on the horizon. So we've got a couple of different places we can see what this will do. Um, so we have four sliders here. The first one, amount, is pretty straightforward. It's just the amount of sharpening we're going to get. Uh, as you can see, it's already set at 25. These are the default sharpening amounts that Lightroom applies when you open any kind of image in here. Uh, it will do this automatically. So if we turn this down to zero, um, it, you can see it gets a little bit softer, but that's basically how it really would have looked like um, out, of, out of the camera. Let's go back. Um, if we take this the other direction and go all the way, we can see that got a lot sharper. Um, radius uh, tells us how many pixels beyond the edges it's going to sharpen. Uh, if you recall, sharpening, uh, similar to clarity, uh, it just adds um, edge contrast around some of the pixels. So it gives it the appearance of sharpness, but it doesn't actually give you any more detail or resolution than, uh, than the image had in the camera. So if you have a blurry photo that's soft because it's out of focus or you had camera shake, uh, no amount of sharpening will get back information that was just never recorded. So keep that in mind. This is not a, a magic cure-all for fixing things like that. The best solution to those is just to be a more careful shooter use a tripod or a faster shutter speed, make sure your focus is, um, is where it should be. Um, so radius, it defaults to one pixel. Um, you can go below that, make it a little bit more, uh, kind of a finer grain. Let's zoom in a little further. We could go down to a half pixel, or we could go the other direction. Um, two pixels, this starts to get a little uh, kind of chunkier. It has a little more punch to it, but uh, I think 
it also starts to make it look very uh, digital. <clears throat> we can go up to three pixels, um, and that's at this size, it looks fine. Uh, but I think if you see this in a print, it's going to start to look kind of uh, artificial. Uh, the detail slider, this, if we turn this down, um, Lightroom, when it sharpens, it's going to try to protect against getting halos. When you turn these up too high, you can sometimes get halos around the edges. But uh, if you want to try to get back a little more detail, um, or apparent detail, as we've noted already, uh, we can turn this up. The side effect is we're eventually going to start to get some halos here. And this ridge line is one where um, I think we may see some. So let's turn it up all the way. Sure enough, you can see the um, the halos are not just this little um, kind of uh, double. Uh, you see this line, kind of an extra line around this. There's there's a halo along this ridge line. Let's zoom in a little further. Um, but you can see it kind of makes it almost as though it makes halos around each little group of three pixels. Um, so the image gets sharper, but when you look up close, it the, the pixels feel a bit more clumpy. You can see that here in the sky, there's kind of this pattern, uh, this texture here that wasn't necessarily there before. So let's back this off. First, let's take this down to one. That eased it some. We can still see it. Let's back out. So it has kind of a strange feeling to it. You can see you're still getting these halos here. Let's bring this back down. Now it's beginning to look a little more gentle. We could turn this down all the way. Looks a little softer. Um, but we still have texture that's that's sharp and popping here. Let's bring this back to the default amount. So it gives us a little bit of some of that crunch back, but it doesn't look unrealistic or cartoonish. Um, I'm also going to bring this down. If you go back now to zero, this is what it was like out of the camera. Uh, that's going to, the how soft this looks will be a function of uh, your camera's resolution, um, but uh, also your lens's ability to resolve detail. Uh, this lens that I was using, um, <clears throat> you know, does a pretty nice job overall. But um, you know it does it does need a little bit of sharpening to help it help it pop some. So let's bring this to let's say about fifty. When we look around these areas. This feels nice and sharp. Um, you can kind of get a sense of. Um, just all the gravel here. Um, and the last tool here, masking, right now the sharpening is being applied to the entire image. Um, if you hold down the Option key on your keyboard for Mac or Alt on a PC, while you click on the masking slider, you can see it turns white. This is its way of indicating uh, it's kind of a preview of where the sharpening is being applied. Right now it's being applied to the entire image. As I slide the slider to the right and we get larger and larger black areas, um, the black areas are not being sharpened. Those are areas of smoother tone and the areas with finer, sharper texture and detail are being sharpened. So I can uh, turn it all the way to the right and you can see it's not sharpening very much of the image. Mainly, whoops, mainly just um, on the, the rocks and the mountains themselves, a tiny bit in the sky. Um, so we can come back down here. Mainly the, the smooth tone in the sky and in the lake are being left alone. Um, so it kind of is, it creates essentially a, a mask to mask this, to keep this from being sharpened. And this, um, this comes in really handy uh, when you want to, be more selective about how much of the image is being sharpened versus here where it's every last pixel in here. Uh, we could 
um, we can kind of fine tune this. I think this is a good amount right here. Um, so that's how to sharpen a landscape image. Next, let's take a look at a portrait and how we would apply sharpening here. Um, I've selected one that uh, mostly is kind of a soft focus portrait and my subject here has pretty uh, relatively smooth skin. You know, we have some little blemishes here and there that are the sort of thing I don't mind retouching out because um, they're not permanent sorts of blemishes. They're, they're uh, not anything that needs to be immortalized because they maybe won't be there the next day. Um, so we could go and use the spot healing tool and clean some of these up. We're going to get into uh, the, some of these um, more targeted uh, ways of uh, adjusting the image later. Uh, but right now I just want to look at sharpening. Uh, so you can imagine this doesn't have as much texture and it doesn't need as much um, sharpening as our landscape does. But there may be areas like uh, the fine detail and eyelashes and eyebrows and hair that we want sharpened. Uh, but we don't want to sharpen um, all of the skin. Um, so let's go here and let's just look at what would happen uh, if we did sort of overdo it. So let's turn it up all the way. Right now you can see it's still sort of a fine grain. It's not too bad. Uh, if we turn up the radius, that starts to get, uh, it brings out every little detail, every wrinkle, every pore. Um, and we, for a portrait like this, we actually want to minimize that sort of thing. Um, if we turn up the detail like this, it gets even crunchier. Um, that's not something that I would give to a client. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so let's take this all the way down. And you can see it just got a lot softer. Um, but we would like to sharpen these areas of fine detail. So let's go back. Let's give it about maybe 75. Let's turn the radius back down to 1. I think that's a good place to keep it for now. Um, detail, we only need about maybe 25. Keep the default. Um, this is where the mask comes in really handy. So it's uh, option for you Mac people and alt for the PC folks. Um, hold that down while you click and drag the masking slider and now you can see why this uh, we don't want to sharpen everything. So I'm going to keep sliding this to, to the right and I'm going to go probably pretty far with it. You can see the areas in white now. Those are really about the only things that we need to sharpen. The rest uh, we don't um, really want to do that too. Um, these areas in here that you could see were somewhat affected by the sharpening later on we'd want to go take uh, maybe a tool like this or the uh, adjustment brush and come in here and smooth those a little bit remove some blemishes um, but we wanted to sharpen this um, this little stud here and using the mask and just the right amount of sharpening we can get those areas to pop but um, we don't have something that's been over sharpened. We have smooth areas that should be smooth and we have areas with some detail that we want uh, to be a little sharper. So that's a quick overview of sharpening. Uh, again, um, take a look at your textbook at the, the Scott Kelby Lightroom book. Um, he has a couple of places in there where he um, has some further examples of how to use sharpening uh, that I think are pretty clear. Uh, if you have any other questions, as usual, uh, email me or post it on the tech support forum. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.